Hey guys, it's Rich with video number 12 of the Crystal Pagan series. In this video, we're talking about water. In the last video, we talked about fire and how it is an energy of passion, lust, love, desire. It's the second of the two projective elements. With water, we come to the first of the receptive elements that I come to whenever I create a circle for ritual. The reason that I see water as a receptive element is because it will morph and form into what it's being put into. In the same instance, anything that goes into it, it forms around it. It doesn't say, I am here, you will conform to me. It is very much the, I will conform to you. I will receive you into myself. So. That's how I see water as a receptive element. So what is the elemental energy of water? Water as an element is, for most people, the element of emotion. And this isn't to be confused with the desire and the passion of fire. This is the whole spectrum of emotions. This is the great joys and the great sadnesses and everything in between. I see this pictured the best in the suit of cups in tarot. In the suit of cups you see the great joys of being with family and friends and the great sadnesses of, and depression of being alone. These emotions are something that helps us learn, helps us grow, helps us live in our day-to-day -day lives. Whereas the fire element, those passions, those desires are something more of a forceful nature. They come and they may go as quickly as they came, but the emotions of water are those that flow through the rest of our life. So these emotions are really something that we have to deal with, examine, and see why we feel the way we feel. Whereas the emotions from fire is, I don't care why, but I want it. These are my passions, these are my desires, this is really what I want not so much with water. It's more of the introspective, the looking inward and seeing why you feel the way you feel. In the Witch's Pyramid, you have the to know as air, you have the to will is fire, and now you have the to dare. Do you dare look at your emotions and question them, asking yourself the why behind what you feel this is what the element of water holds for me. It is the daring to be there with your emotions, looking straight at them and asking yourself, why do I feel this way? For many practitioners, the elemental energy of water is in the West, and I hold true to this as well. It reminds me of the harmony and the flowing, making sure that everything is in balance, that everything is harmonious, and that also reminds me of the senior warden who is stationed in the West. His job there is to make sure that everybody is satisfied, that everybody works in harmony with one another. When looking at ideas that are formed by air and put to the test by being put to the fire, then we come to the element of water. We've already acknowledged the idea from air. We've seen our passions and our desires for it through fire. And whenever we come to water, it is cleansed. The fire burns away the chaff from the wheat, and it comes through for cleansing in water. The passions are subdued, so they're not as forceful. They're not as blunt. And we actually start to examine why we have these passions with the Christopagan series or Christopaganism.com. I had the idea, I have the passion for it, and then I come to water and I examine, I cleanse it. I had the passion of starting a website or starting a series, I had the desire to do it, and then I subdued those passions. Really looking within myself to see why it is that I want to have this website or have this series. For me, it's very much of re-examining myself and my practice and putting it out there for others to see as well. 
kind of both to get other people's thoughts and ideas or to get others to think about what it really means for them, the why behind what they're doing, have that introspective time. So how do we connect with the element of water? Well, this is actually very easy. Taking a bath or taking a shower, feeling the cleansing of water, the emotions just release, or a time for reflection where you can look at your emotions, reflect on the emotions that you're feeling, and truly feel them. You have that alone time in the shower to do so. You can also have a water fountain in your room. I have one in mine, and I absolutely love sitting there listening to the water fountain as it's going. Another thing that you can do is get a recording of water. I have one that I found recently that I spoke on with the Penguin Perspective collab group that I'm on. I found one that's called Babbling Brook, and I will put a little thing like right here and who it's by right here. But I found this one on the Amazon Prime app, the music app. I absolutely love listening to the Babbling Brook. Another thing that you can do if you're looking to connect with the element of water is to have a good cry. Really look at the emotions that you're having, the pure joy and the pure sadness that you're having. Crying doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It can be for good reasons as well. But sometimes all you need to cleanse yourself with the energy and the emotions of water is to have a good cry. If you're having the astral board meeting, once you have examined the fact that you have the passion and desire to move on, cleanse it with water. Looking at those passions and desires and knowing the emotions that are behind it, whether they're good or bad, know why you have those emotions, those passions that are running so highly with that idea. So, I hope this has been helpful. As usual, go ahead and subscribe if you have not already done so. If you'd like to see the article that I wrote on the elemental energy of water, it can be found on crystalpaganism.com. And if you would like to stalk me, you can do so on Twitter at any time. I post some inspirational things as well as some things from my daily life and some blog posts that I find interesting. So, until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.